So I know that. Uh, now, basically, what, what, what I want to do, like what I said to people, why, why they were asking me, Sack, why did you put this together? Um, I feel that when you're complaining of a problem, that means you are the solution to the problem. And um, that's, that's what I feel. And when they say, Sack, you know, put, put in, you know, <laughs> solutions. And so, I, I want you to know, sir, I'm going to talk to you first, sir. Um, what is your perception about the youth in Nigeria? What do you think... Um, are we, are we good? Are we too young to rule? What do you think we need to do in Nigeria as a young person to represent? Because you've been consistent with your message. You're sure, you, you, you know what you've been at. For several years, I've heard you say, you know, Nigeria is great. This, you have a lot of statistics about Nigeria. What do you have to say, sir, about it? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, before I answer your question, yes, if sir. you don't mind, yes, sir. Uh, how many people agree with me that it's not the easiest thing in the world to to be happy being in nigeria it's not the easiest i'm not saying you know when you think about all the challenges and you have to turn for instance electric power into a prayer point father please oh in the name of jesus eh? even when there's light then you begin to pray father we as, as they are about to split the, the match, Nigeria's we Africa. seize all. Yes. Uh -huh. we close, my more lower. But to be truthful, you know, when you think about Proverbs 17, 22, it says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. And in my opinion, I think that one of the reasons why Nigerians have still been able to be happy as a people, regardless of all the challenges that we've had, is because of the comedy industry in Nigeria. I think in terms of all the things that we've had, and for me, I said that I was going to do this because it was laid upon my heart, that if there's ever been anyone here whose spirit was lifted by the icons of comedy, including my brother Julius Agu, Alibaba, and, and Sako, Teju Babyface, I want anyone and you don't have to join us in this, but anyone who has been lifted, whose spirit has been lifted because of the work, the great work that this industry has done for us, I want us to stand up and give all comedians a standing ovation, please. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. You guys have made it a lot easier for us as a people to continue to be happy and to endure a lot of the challenges that we've seen Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. All right, so you asked me a question. What do I think about, about young people? Yes. A few, a few years ago, I was attending an event, and I was told that a former head of state general, of, uh, a former head of state of Nigeria, had said that he had looked at the young people of Nigeria and did not find anyone that could rule Nigeria in our generation. And about four TV stations had interviewed me at the same time. And they asked me, fella, what do you think? And I said to them, I, I pray that General, his name, I said, I pray that General, I, no, sorry. I said, I pray that he's right. I said, I pray that they will not find anyone in our generation that will be able to rule Nigeria. Because Nigeria had been ruled at that time for about 53 years. And we had never been able to accomplish or actualize the potential of our great nation. I said, but I believe very strongly that in our generation, we have leaders, not rulers. And that... Our generation will lead Nigeria, but we will not rule. Because rulers subdue and their subjects. Leaders serve their followers. And I believe that by God's grace, we would see the emergence of a generation of great leaders. Amen. But we will not be rulers. Now, do we have young people that can rule Nigeria? By God's grace, no. But we have seen young people who have a quest to lead Nigeria. And to be able to serve and it is, in my opinion, um, this, the young, the next, this generation will be the greatest generation that Nigeria has ever seen. 
and this is what I believe. This is just my own heart. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Um, um, and that, and now I'm going to ask my big boss. One of the things that I noticed about people that have talent is I have talent. I have talent. And, and even with the talent, some, some of them don't even have money, right? You see people talented, but they don't have money. So I want to ask this question. Is talent really enough? I want to ask you, sir. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, forgive me for breaking protocol by standing. Yes, Years of uh, standing doing comedy makes it hard for me to sit if I'm not uh, on TV. So I will stand a bit. So good evening, everybody. First of all, this man, uh, Felad Rotoye, is a great man. I know you have clapped already and I hate to burden you. But please put your hands together for him again. You are clapping for him because, he, um, before I answer your question, he led me into uh, the first real suffering period of my life. My first wilderness. Uh, what I am today and what I'm going to become, this was the man that God used as the catalyst. Uh, now, don't clap yet. Let me tell you how he made me suffer. That's why we clapped in advance. Up until 2007, I was just a comedian. And even though what I saw in my head was more than what was happening in my life, I could see no way past it. When I started out in the year 1999, I saw myself being celebrated by people in front of audiences all over the place. But my career wasn't tallying with what I was seeing. The people I started with and the ones who came behind me were outstripping me. So finally, 2007, I rented my first apartment in Suruleri. Four bedroom, spent all my money, paid two years, rugged, DSTV, everything. So I carried my mentor, my Egbo, Feladuro Toye, to come and pray for the place. Four bedroom, Suruleri, Akobi Crescent. I paid two years.